Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my video. And today I'm going to be doing sort of an install tutorial guide on the race wire and race light LEDs from Tiny's LEDs. Now Tiny's LEDs originally started out with pretty much just this little guy, the little three board LED, and then they branched out to other things like RGB LEDs, also this 6S6 chip LED, which is my current favorite of the one I use. And then we have the race wire from White Noise FPV. This is basically uh, just little PCBs that the current passes through. So you put these on the arm and that way if you have a prop strike, um, it won't chop your wires, that should be just fine. And then you have the race wire mini, which are shorter versions. And now the new race lights, which are basically LEDs that solder on top of the race wire. So you do need race wires um, for these to work. They have to work together. It solders on top of here, and so that when the uh, motor draws power through the board, it actually lights up the LEDs. So the more power that motor is drawing, the brighter the LEDs will be. And then they also do have race light minis right here. And then this is just a stack of some 6S, 6 chip LEDs. These are the... Um, pink ones, these are my favorite to run, so I got a bunch of those. So the quad I have here is a version two mode two ghost. I just swapped over the frame. You can see everything pretty nice. I don't have everything fully um, put together because I'm gonna need to uh, change it for when we add these LEDs, but I actually already do have some uh, 6S green LEDs already wired up on here. Let me just plug those in real quick just to get a look. So you can see very, very bright, and this is only a 4S pack. These things are really, really bright. So let's get started with putting these on. But first up, I forget which colors these are as these ones aren't marked. So a quick way to tell is to take a battery where you can just get two, um, two bare leads. Be careful you don't short stuff out. And then you can just tap two of the pads. So the little, uh, the race lights themselves have these three little pads at the bottom and that is for, if you take a look at this quad where I already have them installed, that's for three little wires to go uh, down to the bottom uh, bottom board because you can put them on the bottom but obviously you don't have a motor running through there so you just connect that up without a race wire on the bottom. So if we just take the battery and touch the uh, little pads here on the end, just touch two of them. Should be able to get them to light up. There we go. And it only lights up three of them. And then if you reverse the polarity, obviously these ones are blue. Reverse the polarity and you can check the other three just to make sure all the chips are working. So this is a set of blue. Let me check the others. Okay, and this is set of blue as well. So that means these full ones are green. So for the quad here for the back, I'm going to put full size race wires on the back and then blue on top. So that'll be these two. So I'm just gonna break these boards apart right here. So these are the blue ones. I want blue on top. There we go. I'll break off two of the race wire boards. Okay, so when you're soldering the race wire and the race light together, you don't wanna pre-tin these pads because if you do, that'll add height. And when you try and put the uh, race light board on top, it's not gonna sit fully um, flat against there. So you pretty much just wanna leave it as is. And you can take something like a little clamp to hold the two uh, boards together as straight as you can get it right there. And then we can take our soldering iron and it should be pretty simple to just tin and flow up the two pads together from the race wire and the race light. You want your iron decently warm for this since there is a bit of PCB and copper to heat up. There we go. So there are the completed joints. They look pretty nice and since we didn't uh, pretend, you can see the boards lay perfectly flat against each other, which is just what we want. And now the LEDs are sort of offset to one side because of these pads, but you can put it either way around. It doesn't matter. Um, I just prefer to mount mine with the LEDs towards the middle. Uh, no particular reason for doing that. That's just how I did it on this quad, so I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Okay, so if we size this guy up on the quad, we can get an idea of where we're gonna need to cut our motor wires. And you can hopefully see this full-size version is a bit long. It's gonna leave your motor wires really short at the end here. I'm not a giant fan of that, which is why I think the uh, race wire minis is a much more appropriate option because it'll leave a little bit more length on your motor wires. 
And if you're just using the bare race wire here, obviously without the race lights, you just um, wire them directly in line. You do need to insulate the bottom here. It says right on the board, um, just a little bit of sticky tape. That'll be fine there. Insulate between the carbon. Um, but pretty much you want to take your prop here and then sort of uh, bend the tip down. And depending on which uh, prop you have, it'll be different. So you want to see where it strikes. So you make sure you cover that area. You know, don't put it over here because what good is that? So... Okay, so this is gonna go right here. Our motor wires are gonna need to be about cut to this length. So I'm just gonna pull it off to the side slightly and make a little indentation with my um, knife here so I know how long I need to cut them. And I think I'm actually going to uh, take this motor off so that way it'll be easier to solder it up to the race wire. Okay, so I have the motor off, and I'm just gonna find those little marks I made. And I'm gonna snip the motor wires right there. And if you do need more room, you can trim back the heat shrink on the motor there, as there's still about a centimeter of wire in there. Just going to strip and tin the motor wires. You don't wanna leave too much exposed. The pad on the race wire is pretty small. There we go. And now basically it's as simple as just flowing everything together, one, two, three, directly across. Okay, there we go, that's that. I had to do that bit, a little bit off camera because uh, pads are a little bit small for me to see with the camera in the way. So if we get that focused, you can see everything nice and clean, no shorts there. And then basically we just do the exact same thing on the quad side by cutting these wires here to length and then it might be uh, advantageous to remove the standoff if that gets in the way. Okay, I've got everything set up to solder the ESC side to the race lights. Let's see if I can get this wire in here. These pliers are not the best tool for this job. Make sure everything flows nice. There we go. Go and then the third one I like to run around the standoff just to give it a little more room since it needs to be really close there. Um, just do the length of these full size one, which is why I also like the mini better. It makes it a little less cramped. Okay, everything's all lined up and then just heat and everything flows together nicely. Um, but hopefully you can see all the joints turned out decently well. Okay, there we go. That one is all installed now. If we power it up, we should see some light. Let me actually try to move this green guy out of the way so it doesn't just completely blow the camera out. It still is blowing the camera out. I'm reflecting that's how bright they are. But they did all light up and everything good there. And hopefully you could see slightly that they, um, as it was beeping, they got um, brighter there. So lastly, all there is to do for this, um, obviously you do need to still insulate this uh, side between the carbon, so I just used some um, VHB 3M tape and basically just cut out little strips of it so I can mount the uh, boards to it. So I'm just lining this up to see about the length I need a tiny bit shorter. And I'll pull this off and I'll cut that into individual strips then for the race light. I'm to get three out of this. There we go, and then I can just peel these off individually and use them to stick to the race wire. So also, this is why it's helpful to have your motor off when you're doing this. You can just flip it over and stick it to the bottom, just like that, and then peel off the backing. And be careful when you put this down. Obviously, you wanna make sure your motor is lined up. Um, but you can kind of just look at the holes as you put it down sort of set the motor down first and Then stick it down and this tape is pretty flexible. It's actually pretty thick stuff. You can get a lot thinner stuff This is like a millimeter or two thick um, So it has plenty of give in it so the motor will shift and there we go
And then you can put an extra zip tie around there if you want, but sticky tape should be more than enough, as well as these short little wires. You can see my tape is pretty thick there, but just make sure you have something under there to insulate between the carbon and you'll be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw this other motor on. I'll do the other race wire and race light on this side, and then I'll do the two minis up front. They're the exact same procedure. It's literally just a smaller board. And then I'll show you how to uh, run the wires from the top to the bottom to hook up underneath LEDs. Okay, so while I was wiring up the front, I figured I might as well show you this. So obviously the main point of the original race wire just by itself is to help prevent against prop strikes coming across there. And then when you put a race light on top of that, you can still hit that there. So that's not the most ideal to have the light on top versus the bottom. So if you just want to run um, the bare race wire on top, you still can run the race lights on the bottom. It's just as simple as uh, taking some wires here. Let me get this focused. So you can see basically I just tacked some wires on top of the um, motor lines here and just took them down to the race light for the bottom. Obviously you want to use as thin gauge wire as you can and get the length better than I did here. I put a little bit too much on. But basically it's just the left pad is one so we just go to the middle here. So one the middle is two so we go to pad number two on the race light and then three is the far right so we go to the right there because it's just one, two, three across there from the left, and then that'll work. So now you have pretty much invincible prop strike protection up top, and then you have your cool throttle pulsating LED on the bottom if you want there, and I'll plug it in. And cover the green one there, so there we go, that's all lighting up. So that's how you do that setup if you don't want to use a race light on top since these guys do have their own individual little pads to run the wires down to. You can just tack them on top of the motor signal wires. Okay, so here we are back. We have the two back ones fully done and installed and I did do up the front ones with the mini race lights and hopefully you can tell what I'm talking about with a lot more motor wire here. I'm a lot more comfortable with that. And then on this front one here, I did wire up the bottom race light. I put a full race light on there. And they basically just take the wires from pad to pad, which I'm gonna show you how to do right now. So on the mini race light, we just have these three little pads coming across. So I'm just gonna tin these up with a little bit of solder on there. Just like that. And then I'm going to take some, I think this is 28 gauge wire, it's whatever the thinnest wire I have is, and just cut some little sections out of it. There we go. And then I'm going to take... Then we're gonna take these little wires and just simply uh, solder them onto these little pads. Very straightforward and obviously the um, smaller the wire here you have is better. There's no need for any sort of thicker gauge in terms of current carrying or anything. And then I'm gonna get this guy all the way seated down. There we go. And I'm just gonna kinda bend these down underneath the arm to get to the other LED. And then I have to get the other LED. Okay, I've already got sticky tape on here. I'm just gonna place it about there to match the other one. And now normally you would do a full size to a full size or a mini to a mini, but I'm mixing it up and doing a mini to a full size just to show that you can. Tin up these pads. So now if we look back on the top at the mini, um, the far left wire here is where these pads connect to. They just go straight up there. So if you do get a tiny little bridging, which it looks like I might have right here between this wire, it doesn't matter. Um, so basically it's just wire one, two, and then three. So if we flip this over, get the, uh, this wire here is going to need to go to um, one in the middle, and then the next one over will go to two. 
just like that. And then this one, because we're using a mini and a full size, there's a little mix up. They do have to cross. If you're using both the same, they would just go straight one to one. Um, but this one, we're going to have to cross over to get to the three since I'm using the different LEDs here. But it's just one, two, three, connect them up together. And I like to try and keep these as tight as I can along the arm, just, since it, just so it looks a little bit cleaner. But you can leave a little slack if you'd like. Okay, everything's all tinned up and ready to go. So I'm basically just gonna hold the wire there and flow it down. It was the second one and then the third one. Still need to cut since it has to cross over. It'll just be right about there. So everything's good. Once again, just up close, check for any shorts you might have. Then let's plug it in and see what we get. There we go. Hopefully you can see both of those are working. So that's all the LEDs installed. Now I just basically all that's left is have to uh, stick these green ones back underneath the arms as well as uh, just put some zip ties for my antennas. I'll finish that all up off camera and then we'll recap and I'll show you all the LEDs in action. All right, so there we go. We're all finished up. All the LEDs and everything is set. So we have the full-size blue race lights in the back, the mini blue race lights up front, and then on the bottom we have full-size green race lights. And then we have the uh, six chip LED always on green LEDs in the back on the bottom there since those will be extremely bright. And if someone's coming up behind you or if you pass somebody, they'll see green. <laughs> That's just how bright they are. So let me get a battery and a radio and I'll turn everything on and demonstrate. So let me move this stuff over a little bit just to show. Get the to open radio G10. turned on and we'll get the quad plugged in. So if I go ahead and arm it here, hopefully you can see we have the blue up front and then the blue in the back. And then if I flip it over, <laughs> those green, wow, yeah, those things are extremely bright. Oop, it's moving because it's sitting on the motors, but we have the green working on the bottom there. So basically, as I explained earlier, how these work is the more um, power that's going through the motors, you can see the green and the blue here, it's actually a good shot. Um, the brighter they get. So as I'm moving the pitch stick, um, it's adjusting the speed of these motors. You can see they get brighter. So that's basically going to cause things to pull. So you see, it's going to create a really cool effect. Especially in a race when you're pumping your throttle all together, they're all going to blink together. So that's basically what the uh, race lights do. It's really cool. And then when you disarm, they're off. So another cool potential feature of these lights is if you have lost your quad maybe in the weeds or something, um, after, you know, beacon mode for your ESCs, after a couple minutes, they'll start beeping the motors. Um, that actually will light these guys up a little bit. It's going to be super bright since it's very low, very low power, but it might be bright enough for you to be able to see it in the bush. All right, so that's going to bring us to the end of the video here, which was just a tutorial on how to install the race lights and pretty much what they are. Um, in terms of what my favorite LEDs and combos are to use, I'd probably prefer the race wire minis um, on top and then with the race light minis underneath on the front and then a set of six chip LEDs on the back here um, that are always on because they're just absolutely insanely bright and then the other ones still add that cool factor of the pulsating. But anyway, you go with these LEDs, there's lots of cool options for you to sort of mix and match and choose whatever you want. And of course, there's lots of colors. And there's also RGB LEDs and thin LEDs and X-Class LEDs that are really long. There's a ton of different LEDs on their site, so there's really a lot that you can choose from and customize if you want. So yeah, it's going to bring us to the end of the video here. There'll be links down in the description to all of the products that I use, as well as there's tons of other stuff on their site. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.